This is a Bilstein ADS. It is a monotube shock absorber elect electronically adjustable. In this case, is the front shock absorber of a Mercedes ML164 with air spring. The components of this shock absorber are the rod, the guide, the body, an inner cylinder, a bottom valve at the end of the inner cylinder, a rod with a rebound spring, the rebound stop, the piston, and here we have the oil and gas separator. Here there is the adjusting system, composed by two pistons, two electromagnetic valves, and two solenoids. Now, the inner tube, the cylinder, and the outer cylinder are in communication thanks to these holes that allow the oil to pass from one cylinder to the other. The shock absorber works in this way. And if I pull the rod in, I create a pressure between the piston and the bottom valve and a vacuum between the piston and the guide. Because this pressure difference, the oil crosses the piston. Consider that this piston is very hard, okay? In rebound, when I pull the rod out, I create a pressure between the piston and the guide, as well as a vacuum between the piston and the bottom valve. And again, because the pressure difference, the oil moves from the top to the bottom, crossing the piston. As I said, the oil can flow through this hole going to this chamber. And from this chamber, through a hole, can arrive to the adjusting system. In the adjusting system, can cross the pistons. Of course, if these valves are open. And if open, the oil can flow in, the, in this chamber between this and these cylinders. The oil can flow through this chamber. And when it is in this chamber, through a second hole, can arrive here, under the O-ring. Here there is an O-ring allowing the oil passing from here to here or vice versa. So the oil pass from here to here, just moving through the adjusting system. When the oil is here, can cross the bottom valve with any effort and arrive here, where the separator moves up and down. Here we have the nitrogen at a high pressure. Now, if the two valves are closed, the oil cannot pass through the hole and escape. So, so it's obliged to pass only through the piston. That being very hard makes the shock absorber very hard too. If I open one valve, since this valve is softer than the piston, part of the oil can escape from the piston crossing this valve and the shock absorber gets softer. If I close this valve, opening this, that maybe is softer than this, the shock absorber gets even softer. If I open both, the shock absorber gets more and more softer. The main problem of this shock absorber 
are the following. First of all, noisy in the Teflon band, even if new. When the rod goes up and down, it shakes, making noisy. Second reason of problems is the oil seal. It is a very nice oil seal, but is also quite delicate. And at the end, it starts dropping oil. And the oil affects the air spring that explodes. The third problem of this shock absorber is the O-ring that get wasted very easily, especially when passing in this area where has been welded or the tube is little bit rough. As soon as the oil seal get damaged, the gas escapes from this chamber to this, the pressure decrease, and the oil becomes uh, compressible. So creates a sort of foaming and uh, um, cavitation gets easier. And because this becomes more and more noisy. It is suggested to replace the original guide with the kit 95602 if it is preferred to weld the manifold into the shock absorber or the kit 95610 if it is preferred to make the grooves into the body of the shock absorber. It is mandatory to replace the o-ring of the separator or even the wall separator too. To do so, it is suggested to use the shown kit. Now, let's see how to remove the bottom cap and to thread its housing. Place the shock absorber into the mandrel of the lathe machine and center it with the lathe bezel. The main tools you need are 98626, that is a conical cutter, the 46 mm cutter 98572 to remove the bottom cap, and the screw tap 96131, 47 per 1. With a centering tip, make a first hole into the bottom cup. Using the 46 mm cutter 98572, remove the bottom cup. Keep the cutter properly lubricated.
Using the tool 98626, make a conical chamfer where the bottom cap has been removed. In this way, the O-ring will seal on the body of the shock absorber. Using the steel screw tap 96131 and the centering device 96436, thread M47 per 1 the bottom of the shock absorber. Remove the chips with compressed air. Remember, do not remove the oil gas separator because it prevents dirt goes in. Remove the original guide on the Mangusta or on the lathe machine, up to you. Remove the guide, the piston with the rod and the oil. Then with the Mangusta, weld the manifold with the groove for the seeger of the new guide on the body of the shock absorber. Or make the groove for the sear clip directly on the body of the shock absorber using the tool 98516, as already shown in other videos. Use the tool 98513 and one sear clip to remove the separator as shown. Lubricate the ring with grease. Fit the tool into the shock absorber. And block it with a sear clip. Double check it is blocked in and then with air, compressed air Pressurize, expelling the original separator. In this way, you have made all the works, avoiding dirt gauzing. Remove the sear clip and the tool 98513. Use the tool 98546 to dismount the ADS adjusting system. First thing, remove the thread ring. If needed, beat it little bit because it can be blocked because rusty. Remove the solenoid, being very careful with the attached spring. Do not lose it. Double check if the valves are not blocked using a magnet.
otherwise clean them. Mounting the kit 40756 on the shock absorber, you will see that is little bit too long. And now we will explain why, don't worry. Follow next instructions step by step. Fit the ring on the bottom cap and the bottom cap into the new lappet cylinder. Fit and screw the lappet cylinder and the screw tap into the bottom side of the shock absorber and observe that the edge of the bottom cap is not touching the chamfer of the shock absorber. Look, as said, the edge of the bottom cap is not touching the chamfer of the shock absorber, so the o-ring is not selling. And this is because the lapper cylinder is too long. So it must be shortened on the lathe machine. Sorry for the inconvenient. Sorry if you must shorten the lapper cylinder but we couldn't image how much you would penetrate with the 98626 conical cutter, so in the dubbed was better to make it little bit longer than shorter. Now remove the bottom cap with the lappet cylinder and shorten it, just as needed on the lathe machine. Shorten the lappet cylinder just as needed, not more. Once the lappet cylinder has been shortened, you have to mount the kit again on the shock absorber and test if the length now is correct or not. In that case, dismount it again, fit the separator it and mount again. Be careful, because the separator must be installed with the teflon band towards the bottom valve and the o-ring towards the bottom cap. In this way, even if the separator arrives to the end of its rebound stroke, the gas will remain trapped into the lappet cylinder, otherwise will escape.
Okay, now that we are sure that the lapid cylinder has the right length, we can remove everything to install the separator and install it again by the last time. As said, place the separator with the o-ring towards the bottom cup and the teflon band towards the bottom valve. In this way we will avoid gas escape when the separator arrives at the end of its stroke. Push the separator in within the end, fit the o-ring on the cap, it will seal with the shock absorber into the chamfer. Screw the kit in. Finally, screw in the separator positioning 98526. In this way, the separator will remain in the right, right position.